Hey, what's happening, folks? We got to talk about overlay DFS tonight. Uh, we got ourselves some Thursday night football. I don't know about y'all, but I miss having baseball or basketball in the nightly. So Thursday night football is kind of a big deal to me. It is uh, just a little bit of that fix that I need to make my way until Sunday. But lo and behold, uh, we're just a little over a month away from the start of the NBA season. I dropped a video a couple hours ago talking about how you can win a free membership to the NBA uh, for the DFS five pack, completely free. All you have to do is watch that video and follow the directions to get entered. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our longtime customers, Daniel Joseph, uh, for going out of his way. He actually just bought us a membership and said, do a giveaway, give it to somebody. Uh, so big props to you, my man. I think that's really selfless of you. Um, and whoever wins, I'm sure will, uh, I don't know if they can uh, say thank you in person, but I'm sure they mean it. That's the video that's out earlier. The other thing is, guys, if you watch these videos just because you're bored and want to talk sports, you're like, I get that. But if you haven't signed up to play an overly yet, I, I don't know what you're waiting for. And what I mean by that is I honestly believe from the bottom of my heart that this is the best kept secret in DFS right now. What I, I think it's the easiest thing to win on. And I know we all want like quick scores, like GPP wins, and that's great. That's hard to do. But the matchup shop's been out for about two months now. When we got back from COVID, I had like $11 in my overlay account, like almost basically nothing. And it turned that into over 800. Well, I did some withdrawals, but probably over $1,000 based off of 11. Again, and I'm not trying to do that as a humble break, even though obviously it is kind of a humble break. Um, but I think the point is, I think this is much easier to win on. And what's the point of playing DFS is winning? So if you haven't done it yet, go there, sign up, make your first deposit. What I would tell you is uh, there's some deposit issues with some of the providers right now that they're working with. If you need help doing things through like PayPal, et cetera, or with a credit card, you can reach out to their customer service and they'll help you right away. Just keep me posted on that <clears throat> and screenshot that initial deposit so I can give it to them and then I can get you a free uh, membership to the five pack. So uh, as per use, uh, I'm out taking a run and they drop all these new matchups and my phone is flooded with notifications and people wanting to know what my thoughts are on overlay tonight. So I figured what the hell, let's come home uh, I got nothing to do tonight. Kids are at their mom's. Uh, lady friend isn't coming over till later. So let's talk about the matchup shop and let's talk through these individual matchups and where we want to go tonight. I have not spent a lot of time on them right now. So bear with me. Uh, I'll try to tell you about how confident I am on each of them and why I think you should go in this specific direction. All right. We got one, two, three, six of these to go through. And I'm just going to reset the DraftKings thing because we might just go here for some quick stats as far as we're going. Like, for example, I was pretty sure Moyle Cox hadn't been ruled in or out yet, but we know this one for sure. So starting with Derrick Henry versus Jonu Smith. So what I find interesting about this one is I don't expect this to be a crush game from Derrick Henry. But eight points, it may seem like a lot. But it's not that much. And what I want to do is go through the difference between Janu Smith and Ferkser lately. So Janu Smith was like this underrated tight end early in the year. He was getting tons and tons of catches. He got a little banged up. This guy has been a virtual no-show. It also kind of coincides with A.J. Brown being healthy again a little bit. Uh, over the past four weeks, he is being out-caught and outproduced by Anthony Ferkser. You know, he's getting one and a half catches per game. I know he hit pay dirt last week. Uh, but in this time, he has 83 yards, it looks like. Meanwhile, Ferkser, I mean, he had this monster game when Smith was out. And Simpson has been working well uh, with Ryan Tannehill. So you have to tell yourself a story right here. This is a term that Bellman uses. I kind of like, tell yourself a story about how this game is going to go. Uh, we both agree that we expect this game to be competitive. So ask yourself this. Do you expect Derrick Henry to score tonight? If you think Derrick Henry scores, I think you go with Team Henry on this one. If you don't think he scores, then I'm probably going to go with John U. Smith. So this is also a half-point PPR website. And again, I know John U. Smith is better than what he's done over the last month. I also know that if you look at how these teams rank against fantasy – uh, the very best in the league against the tight end position so far this year has been the Indianapolis Colts. So this is a bad matchup, uh, very bad matchup for John Smith. 
It ain't a great matchup for Derrick Henry, though, as the Colts' defense is just good. Uh, they're good at basically every level, so this is not a crush spot. Now, gun to head, because what do I expect out of John Smith? I mean, based off of recent production and how I expect this game to play out, I don't expect much. I just don't, about four points maybe, which means do I believe that Derrick Henry is going to surpass 12 and a half points in order to be the winner right here? Well, I, I don't say that with great confidence, but my best bet is that he is. If you look through the Derrick Henry game log, he didn't score last week, but trying to beat 12 and a half points is something he's done in every single game this year with the exception of the game against Jacksonville where he still had 25 touches and last week against the Bears uh, where their offense wasn't great and he was not productive. So if given the opportunity, uh, I'm going to go Derrick Henry. And if I had to rank this on a confidence, like one through five, five being the most confident, I'd, I'd say about a three, three and a half. So I'll put a few bucks on it, and, I, and I'll include it in a couple of parlays when I put that in tonight. All right, next up, Ryan Tannehill against A.J. Brown. Once again, I want to reiterate that this is a half-point PPR website. So like, if you look through A.J. Brown's stats, You have to take everything with a grain of salt because he's minus two, on average, minus about three points. Well, A.J. Brown's been cooking. I mean, he's really been cooking. He's outscoring Tannehill most weeks. Uh, minus the games against Buffalo and Houston, which are great matchups for Tannehill. I expect this one to be a little bit slower. I think what's also worth mentioning about A.J. Brown, this dude catches touchdowns every single week. Every single week. This is now five straight games. Every game but the game against Denver where Corey Davis went off, and they really fed Derrick Henry that game. So I'm on Team AJ Brown right here. And on his confidence scale, like, give me about a four on this one. I would bet bigger on AJ Brown than I would Derrick Henry because five and a half points is a lot. It's a lot of points. So give me AJ Brown right there. All right, next up, Phillip Rivers versus Rodrigo Blankenship. So Blankenship is the kicker. What do you pencil him in for tonight? About eight points, right? Give or take. I mean, two field goals, two extra points. I think that's a fair guess. If you go look through Blankenship, not that you can really guess a kicker's game log. Oh, there's some sweet specs, man. I don't kick a lot of field goals on Andy. Well, maybe that's just the last couple of weeks. I take that back. The average is nine and a half points a game. Meanwhile, Phillip Rivers averages about 15 and a half. But this is a great spot, in my opinion. Tennessee against the quarterback, uh, they're just outside the top 10. 11th worst in the league. Not good, though. So in this situation, give me Phillip Rivers. I, I like him to cover the 7 half. I think Phillip Rivers is going to have a nice night here. Uh, and I'm not a big Rivers fan. All right, next up, Jonathan Taylor versus Jordan Wilkins. All right, here's another one where I think you need to tell yourself a story. How do you think this game is going to play out? If you think Indy gets a lead in this game, I think you have to like Jonathan Taylor a little bit more. It's a good bounce back spot for him. I'm not a big Jonathan Taylor fan, but he still does get more looks inside the five than Wilkins. Wilkins had more carries the last two weeks, though. So actually, you know what? That's a tough one. That's a real tough one. 31 carries the last two weeks. And as far as Wilkins goes, like, I mean, he's equally uninvolved in the passing game as Jonathan Taylor. He got three catches the last two weeks. He's got four. Neither of them have done a ton of anything. What am I getting here again? Plus two on Wilkins. I like these first three better than I like this one. I think this is a true pick -em. I would probably skip it on my parlay right here because I don't have a great feeling. Or if I wanted to bet small dollars and I felt good about the other picks, I might run small dollars and do each way once. Probably not the smartest way to bet it, but that's how I look at it. So I'll ignore this one. This one's a true pick -em to me. I don't have a good feeling about the Colts running game tonight. When we did the DK breakdown earlier today, uh, I told you guys, I like the spot for the Colts position players significantly better than I like it for the Tennessee players. However, the flip side of that is, Tennessee's got a real true pecking order, and the Colts just don't. All right, Zach Pascal versus T.Y. Hilton. Pascal in there every single week with Rivers. 
definitely has some chemistry. Not a major ceiling guy. Phillip Rivers does not throw touchdown passes to wide receivers. He kind of lacks any real chemistry with T.Y. Hilton, in my opinion. T.Y. Hilton had that decent game against Cleveland. And that's about it, man. Give me Zach Pascal. Plus a point. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, then Trey Burton versus Naheem Hines. For me, this is another one where you need to tell yourself a story. Who do you think gets up in this game? If you think the Colts are up, then you're probably not going to like Naheem Hines a lot. He is very reliant on the passing game. If they get a lead, he's just not utilized a ton. Also, this is a half-point PPR website. The flip side of that is Trey Burton has been absolutely bailed out by two rushing touchdowns over the past couple of weeks. Got 15 yards receiving the last two weeks. So, I mean, that's a tough one. We do have Jack Doyle, who is out tonight. Doyle's been playing. He's been getting some receptions and getting some looks. If Moali Cox was out, which he practiced yesterday, so I don't think that's going to be an issue, I would lock in Burton, no problem. As it stands right now, I think I'll take Burton and the point. The points doesn't mean much, but I don't feel good about it. I feel better about betting these four as a parlay and making some individual bets on each of them. And if you're more into like the GPP side of things, you know, parlays are, are a lot closer to that. You know, a $5 bet or whatever your bet is pays out about 10 to 1 right now, which if you make 10 to 1 on the GPP, you're always happy. You only got to get four things right here. To me, that's a lot easier. Definitely want a bunch of four-way parlays on this one. And if you have the coin and you want to do something like bet 100 bucks, I mean, that could pay you out quite nicely. So I would say these are my favorite bets, these four. I look at these two a little bit closer to pick -ems. Uh, So not saying that they're bad picks. And if you like them, I'm sure like the Wilkins-Taylor thing could be kind of exciting to like watch down the stretch. Like, come on, Indy, bring in Wilkins, bring in Wilkins. And it gives you some fun, right? Like, <clears throat> I think one of the things I try to bring up more than a lot of other like DFS guys we do play this game to have fun, uh, especially right now. I don't know about you guys, but like Wisconsin, like you can't do anything. Like everybody in the whole state has COVID, so like you can't go anywhere and do anything. I need to be entertained at home. DFS entertains me. And sitting down the stretch of this game, cheering for Wilkins to come back in is going to be entertaining for me or whoever it might be. So um, that's that, guys. Uh, I wish you all the best of luck today. Um, go win some money tonight. And if you haven't signed up to play on Overlay yet, go do so. If you need to reach out to their customer service for a manual transaction, they will help you out. They are working with some of their providers right now to make things a little bit easier on the public. Um, in the meantime, though, you can reach out to their customer service. And if it comes to giving them money, I know that they'll respond really, really quickly in order to give you something to bet with. That's it, guys. Best of luck today. Don't forget to click the thumbs up on the video. Hopefully, you all found this informative. Let's go win that money this evening.